power up. That's the theme for this session this afternoon. And we look at the theme of how we power up. And I will be speaking this afternoon on the term of power up and how it applies to all of us. Fellow soldiers battling the evil one. All of us are acquainted with the evil one, are we not? Well, I'm sure you are. And of those, if you're not, we're going to acquaint you this afternoon and what the battle is and what the battle is not. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to be wanting you to follow along with me as I share God's word this afternoon. And talking on the topic, battling the evil one, I would like for us to turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to read verses 10 through 18. The Bible says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, withstand the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. When you're talking about battling the evil one, we're going to define some terms. Battling means to wrestle. It comes from the Greek word pale. It implies the athletic exercises in the Roman Greco Olympic and National Games. And in this context, it signifies general warfare or contention. It is not harmony. It is not agreement with your adversary. When we're talking about the evil one, we're talking about spiritual wickedness in high places. This implies that which is non-human in its origin and it is of the satanic, unseen world, and there are forces that affect us. Yes, beloved, there is the unseen world that exists today around the world. We don't see it. We can't touch it. We can't taste it. It is intangible, but it is real just as we are. It is non-human, but they definitely affect us on a daily basis. We, beloved, are in a battle, and this is a battle for life. The battle is with Satan and the satanic world. Yes, he has his little imps. It is not like the scenario that we knew as little children growing up about a little man with a red suit on it and pointed ears and a pitchfork. No, that is not the person. We're talking about a real being that is, has his purpose to accuse us. He is the adversary. He's Diabolos. He's the satanic one who has opposed God and all of God's beloved children. They are the forces that affect us. And in this battle, this war began several thousand years ago in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6 and 7, if you turn there. You find the story of Adam and Eve when they were in communion or talking with the devil, the serpent which was more, more subtle than any other beast of the field. I cannot uh, fathom, even when I look at this scripture many times, why is it that Adam and Eve were talking to a talking snake? <laughs> it's un unimaginable. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 and following, God put man in the garden to dress him and keep him. He gave man the opportunity to name every beast of the field. Adam named the elephant, the snake, and everything. And there were no talking snakes. So when Genesis chapter 3 comes, I'm caught off guard on that. But because they listened and obeyed the evil one, now we have a war on our hand. Because of that sin entered into the world. How long is this war or battle going to last? It's not temporary to where you put on your arm and take it off for a while and go and recuperate. It doesn't work that way. This battle is going to last until eternity begins. 
The Bible said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, Paul is communion with the saints in Thessalonica. They had gotten concerned about some of their beloved ones that had died. He said, what's going to happen about them when Christ returns? He says, don't worry about it. I'm paraphrasing here. He says, Christ is going to bring those that are dead back with them. The trump of God will sound, and all of us that are alive shall be caught up in the air to meet him, and there we shall ever be with the Lord. And then verse number 18, he said these words, comfort one another with these words. But he didn't stop there in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 through 10. He said, there you are going through some struggles because we're in this battle against the evil one. We are fellow soldiers. He said in verse 10, but when Christ comes back, he is going to deal with this issue. Now, although we battle against Satan in the unseen world, I'm going to mention this to you. This battle is fought in the physical world. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the Old Testament, to the book of Job. You're familiar with this particular narrative. When God is talking to Job in Job chapter 1, uh, talking to Satan, rather, in Job chapter 1, if you look in verses 6 and following, the Bible says, Now there was a day when the sons of God, note this, came before God, and there also came unto them Satan among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered and said, From going to and fro, from walking up and down near the earth. Now, notice in verse 8, the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? There is none like him in the whole world, a perfect and upright man that feareth God and will cheweth or avoids evil. And Satan rebuttaled, Well, you, you built a hedge around him. You've given everything that he need. I'm paraphrasing here. He said, But if you put forth your hand and touch him, he will curse you to your face. That's the unseen world. Beloved, that meeting between Satan and God was not on earth in a business meeting. That's the unseen world. But Job is going to be affected. If you begin reading at verse number 14, now business picks up. The Bible says, when Job was minding his own business, there came a messenger unto him, said, the oxen were flowering and the darkest feeding beside them. Notice in verse 15, and the Sabaeans came among them and took them away, and they gave them, slain them service with the edge of the sword. And I only, only one person escaped to tell you the bad news. Now, who caused this disturbance with the, uh, the Sabaeans? It was Satan. After he left God, he says, okay, I'm going to go. He is in the unseen world. That's where the battle is. But he came and affected people because that's the way the devil operates. He operates through people and things. In verse 16, notice what happened. And he was yet speaking. The man hadn't even finished speaking yet. And there came also another said, the fire of God is fallen from heaven. Some people say that's an act of God. Not according to this narrative. Satan was responsible for this. The fire came from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them all. I only am escaped to tell you this bad news. Two people right behind each other. Verse 17, while he was yet speaking, there came another said, the Chaldeans made uh, out of three bands, fell upon the, th the camels and took them away and slain all the serpents with the edge of the sword. I alone have escaped to tell you. Three people consecutively coming to tell they didn't even finish. How, what was going on? It's a battle between good and evil. The unseen world is a, can incorporate itself into our physical world, and that's where the battle is. The mistake that we make is we battle physical things with physical things. And our finite minds have yet to grasp the fact that we, beloved, are in a spiritual battle. Now, if you don't learn anything else from this lesson, I want you to learn this. You cannot fight a spiritual battle with physical weapons. And that's the problem we have in the world. We look at evil men throughout the entire world, get the worst of the worst. You cannot defeat that man with a physical weapon. It takes the power of God to deal with the worst of the worst. Only God. Men can go only so far. There have been men up in history who have done a lot of atrocious things. Every single one of them, they have lived and have died. Because death is appointed unto all men. The spiritual world, which reigns supreme by God himself, when Jesus went back to heaven, remember he told his disciples in Matthew chapter 28, 19 and following, I have all authority, all power that's invested into me. That means that everything else is secondary. The, the Hadean world, the, uh, the, the Satanic world rather, operated by Satan, because remember the Bible said hell is prepared for the devil and who? His angels. Satan have some little imps working with him. And here's one thing mistake that we make. We know it academically, but we have to realize, beloved, that this is our battle. It's, with the, it's in the spiritual realm. Notice in Ephesians, going back to Ephesians chapter 2, 6 rather, Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, 
that we have this battle and it is going on right now and we're going to have to deal with it. How are you going to deal with it, Paul? Look in verse number 10. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the schemes or the plan or cunning devices of the devil. Verse 12, one that we omit. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual places. How many times in the last time you've seen powers, mights, and dominions? That's the unseen world. How can you fight against a spiritual entity with a physical weapon? You cannot. That's why he says, be strong in the Lord. God has it under control. That's where our battle is. We looked at the case of Job. We looked at the physical things that happened to him, but it was orchestrated by Satan, who was a spiritual being. If you look in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, one and two you find now he's is being tempted of the tempter, the devil himself. If you notice how Jesus dealt with this situation, when Satan says, turn this stone into bread, he says, it is written. How do you deal with spiritual matters? You deal with them with a spiritual weapon. What did Jesus respond? He says, it is written, the word of God. That's why Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter, uh, chapter 2 and verse 15, he tells us to study the word of God. Amen. All scriptures given by inspiration of God, 1 Timothy chapter 3, 16 and 17, that we may be thoroughly equipped to deal with things in this particular world. We have to have the word of God. Jesus said three times, when Satan approached him in Matthew chapter 4, 1 through 10, it is written. Now, Jesus could have turned stone into bread. He could have cast himself down from the temple and then he have his angels to bear him up. He could have said, I'll do those things, but that was not the issue. That was a spiritual battle. You cannot fight carnality with carnality. Satan is of the evil world. Notice another factor we have to consider right here in the spiritual battle. The word of God is powerful. And that's why Paul's looking in verse uh, Ephesians 6 and verse number 12 again. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We got to realize, beloved, that everything, when it comes to Satan, will be dealt with on a spiritual matter. Peter deals with this in 1 Peter chapter 5 and 8. You know he likens Satan and says, a roaring lion that whom he may devour. Notice he says in verse number 8, be sober. What does that mean? Don't lose your peace of mind. Our young people put it this way, chill out. <laughs> Don't lose your peace of mind. Be vigilant. What does that mean? He means be watchful. What does that mean? We got to put our trust in God and not take matters into our own hand. Weapons will not work. Satan is in the unseen world. And one thing about the unseen world, it is not restricted geographically. We're in Florida today, but Satan is here in Florida. Satan is also in Alabama. He's also on the West Coast. He's in South America, Canada. He's in Europe. How is this so? Because that is the unseen world. That's why we have wars going on around the world. Because the unseen world, which is satanic, is affecting the minds and hearts of mankind. That's where the battle is. When we win the hearts of man with the gospel of Jesus Christ, we win the war. Amen. And we have to keep on fighting that battle. How do you fight evil? You fight them with the word of God. Also, you resist in the faith. Galatians chapter 2, 20, Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. James 4 and 7 says, we need to resist the devil. He will free from you. Why? Because John said in 1 John chapter 4 and 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Since we have Jesus Christ in our lives, we have the power to resist the devil. Self-denial is the key. What are some practical applications? The first thing we need to realize is self-denial. Jesus said in Matthew 16 and verse 24, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up the cross, and follow me. He said in Matthew chapter 6, 24, you know man can serve two masters. He's going to hate one and love the other. Self-denial is the first prerequisite of discipleship. What else must we do? We must not quench the spirit. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 19. We got to abide in Christ. What is another practical application? We got to realize, beloved, that we cannot underestimate the power of Satan, but we must abide in the Lord and use the tools God gave us. Notice what the Bible said in Philippians 4. Paul said in verse 4, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. He said, don't worry about anything. And he says, if you trust in God, pray to God and ask God to help and sustain you, you can make it and survive in this world. 
And then in verse 9 and following, here's one thing we'll overlook. He gives them some practical applications to think on things that are positive and things that are uh, good for us and healthy for us to control the mind. Because what we put in our hearts and our minds is what's going to cause some things to come out in our personality, and that's how we fight this spiritual battle. Let's remember, we're living in the flesh, but we must abide in the spirit. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Thank you.